Good morning, everyone. I'm so glad that you're here today. I want to welcome you to this place, and I hope and pray that you had a great week in the Lord. How many of you believe that God is still in charge? Amen. That God is still on the throne, no matter what you might hear in the news or what you might hear going on around the world. Our God reigns. He reigns above all. Amen? Amen. And he gives us great hope, great hope and peace in our hearts. I have peace in my heart. How about you? I have total peace in my heart and know that, uh, that God has this. Praise the Lord. I want to make sure that you uh, remember tonight at 6 o'clock, we will be having our prayer time, and I want to invite you to come. We'll be praying together uh, for our nation, for our government, for our world. Uh, we'll be praying for the various needs in the church family. You are welcome to come and pray. Also want to remind you that if you'd like to pray around our schools, to be sure to see Donna about that. And uh, they're wanting to, uh, get to get some groups together and just pray around our schools. Our teachers need our prayers. Our students need our prayers these days. So uh, there's going to be some times where we just take, take a school and meet together and just pray around that school, pray for God's blessing on our students and on our teachers. Our open house Bible study uh, is, uh, well, we planned on doing it at our house this last Thursday, but then I realized that that was the same night as the presidential debate. So there were some folks that said that, uh, I love you, Pastor, but I'm going to be watching the debate instead of coming to the Bible study. And I said, you know what? I'm going to watch the debate too. So, uh, so everybody who came to our house watched the debate. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to have our Bible study at our house this week, this coming Thursday. Um, it was intended on being on off weeks from Pastor Lynn's Bible study. So it's now it's going to really be that way. So so we're working on that. So if you are interested in coming and studying the Sermon on the Mount uh, this coming Thursday, and uh, Ronnie, what are we having? Pumpkin pie or apple pie or what are we having? I don't know. Pie and ice cream. I know, I know that. So you're welcome to come this coming uh, Thursday at the Ritchie home, okay? Um, I want to thank you for your continued faithful giving and uh, all that uh, God is doing. We do have a work and witness opportunity coming up. If you'd like to participate in that, we'll be traveling to Holbrook to our, our uh, Native American Christian Academy and doing some work on one of the buildings coming up in March. If you'd like to sponsor someone to help out with that, then uh, be sure to uh, mark it on your offering envelope and drop it in the offering. Uh, the, the cost for the week for materials and the place to stay and the food and everything is uh, $350, I think, $400 for gas and the whole bit. So that takes care of everything. So if you'd like to help sponsor someone, uh, you can give towards that as well. Uh, so uh, be sure and um, and keep that in mind. That's coming up in this next March, but it takes some time to get everything prepared and, and ready to go. We have a special time that we want to do today where we receive new members into our fellowship. And Mark and uh, Shirley Miller have gone through the classes and they've learned all about not only their faith in Christ, but about the Church of the Nazarene. And we are going to receive them into membership today. And uh, what did I do with the membership certificates? Ronnie, I think I left them in the office. Can you believe that? I think I left them. Take the key. There, take the, take the key with you. It's locked. So we're a family church. We make goofs and mistakes and everything. And the neat thing about it is it's going all over the airwaves as well. So, so we take care of that. So, uh, but, um, it's, she didn't, I didn't tell her it was sitting on my desk. So she'll probably, she'll probably see it. In the meantime, um, I think uh, you had something you wanted to share, right? Okay. What's that? Just take it right there. Oh. Don't be moved. Yes, sir. Oh, that's a black button. I never see it anyway. 
you had one at the other church, I painted it white so I could see the button. <laughs> How about fluorescent orange? Well, I wasn't that brave at the time. <laughs> uh, the October is the Pastor Appreciation Month, and we always like to let him sweat it out. We wait to the very last before we decide to give him anything. But we do, as a congregation, want to thank you so much oh, well. for all that you do for us. And I realize that uh, as a congregation, we don't necessarily always realize what it is you do or all, all that you do. But as individuals, when it comes time, you're always there. Okay. And we thank you and appreciate you. So this is a small gift. Well, thank you so much. That you can sh share it with your wife if you would like. Yeah, would it be better if I just go ahead and turn it over to it her? It would save a lot of embarrassment, <laughs> yes. And thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. Amen. There's, there's also a basket back there with a few things for you, Pastor. Oh, okay. Well, thank you so much. We, we thoroughly enjoy, we, we're doing what God called us to do and just... Uh, following the Lord's leading and taking care of. Thank you so much. Uh, I'll tell you what, this is another one that we should appreciate really in so many ways. Amen to that. <laughs> Thank you so much. So, so much. Mark and Shirley, come on up. Go ahead and turn and face the crowd there. This is a special time where we receive new members uh, we do this often as much as we can throughout the uh, year and uh, if any one of you are interested in learning more about the work of the church of the nazarene around the world we're in 168 nations around the world and uh, uh, more than two million members around the world uh, tremendous mission work around the world so we're not alone here up here in little pace in arizona we have uh, a lot uh, work around the world that we do and we're just glad to be a part of this um, it's it's a tremendous blessing to be a part of a church family and to know that you have the care of not only pastors but uh, each other it's a sacred fellowship it's uh, unlike any other uh, group or club or organization in the world because really this is very holy this is a holy group of people this is holy ground it we live and work and dwell in the presence of almighty god and so it's not just a social club we are literally doing the work of the kingdom and uh, people uh, express their uh, uh, desire to become a part of a local church family and say this is going to be my church home i'm going to participate within this church family. Uh, uh, I'm going to do ministry among the people of this church family and community, and, uh, and, and it really does become a family. So it really gives me great pleasure when we have these moments, when we have couples uh, or individuals who uh, want to become a part and state their uh, desire to become a part. <clears throat> this is what we believe. We believe in one God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that the Old and New Testament scriptures are given by plenary, full inspiration of God, that they contain all truth necessary to faith and Christian living, that all humanity is born with a fallen nature. They are in sin and therefore inclined to evil, and that continually and that the finally impenitent are hopelessly and eternally lost, that the atonement through Jesus Christ for, is for the whole human race, and that whoever repents and believes on the Lord Jesus is saved, are saved, justified, regenerated, saved from the dominion of sin, and that believers are to go on unto sanctification, to be sanctified holy, subsequent to regeneration through faith in the Lord Jesus. We believe that the Holy Spirit bears witness not only to this new work and this new birth, but also to the entire sanctification of believers. We believe that our Lord will return and that the dead will be raised and that there will be a final judgment that takes place. Do you heartily believe these truths? If so, say, we do. 
then do you acknowledge that Jesus Christ truly is your Savior? And do you realize that he saves you now? Desiring to unite with the Church of the Nazarene, do you covenant to give yourself to this fellowship and to the work of God in connection with it and as set forth in the, uh, in the scriptures? And, and will you endeavor in every way to glorify God with a humble, humble walk, godly conversation, and holy service by devotedly giving of your means and by faithful attendance upon the means of grace? And by abstaining from all evil, will you seek earnestly to perfect holiness of heart and life in the fear of the Lord? If so, if so say, I will. Then we want to welcome you as official members of this local church to its sacred fellowship, to the responsibility, to the privileges. May the great head of the church bless and keep you and enable you to be faithful in all good works and that your life and your witness may be effective in leading others to Christ. I'd like for the church board members to come up at this time and to welcome you officially into this church family. and just kind of turn and face the crowd here a little bit. <laughs> Mark and Marie have, uh, Mark and Marie, my, I, had another, I had another couple in my previous church 13 years ago by the name of Mark and Marie. Mark and Shirley, <laughs> we want to welcome you into this church. They have already distinguished them, themselves as wonderful believers, as true followers of Jesus, as very outspoken and tremendous witnesses for Christ. And uh, they have, are, are wonderfully raising their family and we are so proud of them. We want to welcome you into this church family and officially and just say how much that we appreciate both of you so much. By the way, uh, this coming Saturday, Mark is gonna be once again uh, leading those on, uh, in front of Pizza Hut with signs this coming Saturday from 10 to 1130, yeah. and uh, with signs that say, Pray for America. So if you'd like to participate in that, and uh, uh, we, we have, you can make some signs or, or we have some signs we can loan to you or whatever, but uh, if you'd like to join Mark in encouraging everybody uh, who drive up here on Saturday mornings to be praying for America, you get different kinds of responses, believe me. Uh, <laughs> lots of different yeah. responses, but most of the responses are honks and waves and yes, pray for this country. So if you'd like to participate in that. So we're gonna, we're gonna squeeze in because she wants to get a picture uh, of this, so go ahead and squeeze on in. You I'm got you got us. You I'm going to squeeze you. <laughs> okay, we're we're supposed to be quiet. <laughs> that was a live action shot. Welcome. May the Lord bless you. We're so glad that you're here today. You ready to worship the Lord? We are going to have some fun this morning. We also want to welcome uh, Jerry and Tanya. This is their last Sunday going to be with us. And so we said, you know what? We want you to play one more time with us as a worship team. So let's welcome Jerry and Tanya and let them know how much that we appreciate them. And they're going to worship with us. Praise the Lord.
sorrow inside. Praise the Lord. I saw Stand the light. Stand up and put your hand up. I saw the light. I saw the light. No more in darkness. No more in night. Now I'm so happy. No sorrow inside. Praise the Lord. I saw the light. I wondered so aimless. I filled with sin. I wouldn't let my dear Savior in. Then Jesus came like a stranger in the night. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I saw the light, I saw the light. No more in darkness, no more in night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. Praise the Lord, I saw the like a blind man, I wandered along. Worries and fears I claim for my own. And like a blind man, that God came back his sight. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I saw the light, I saw the light. No more in darkness, no more in night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. I saw the light, I saw the light, no more in darkness, no more in night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. Praise the Lord, I saw the light, I saw the light. forward to that day? What if it were now? <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, it's all because of what Jesus did for us on that cross. The hope that we have, the joy that we have, the future that we have, our eternal life, all of it paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ on that cross. Not anything that we have done not anything that we have earned, not any goodness in us, nothing. It's all by faith in the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. We owe our eternity to Jesus. 
and to God's love who loved us so much that he would give his one and only son on that cross. Praise the Lord. Jerry has asked that we do this song. And um, because I think it expresses his testimony as well as all of ours. Listen to this tune. asked for us to pray you know I think of that scripture that says and by his stripes we are healed by his stripes we are healed I think of many many scriptures and 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 stories in the Bible where where people would just come to Jesus and they would experience his healing power that woman who had that issue of blood, a bleeding disease of some sort, it could have been leukemia, could have been who knows what. And the crowds pressed in around Jesus. And that woman had so much faith and she was so determined to even to touch the hem of the garment of Jesus that she pressed her way through the crowd I can almost picture maybe she was even on her hands and knees to get through that massive crowd who were pressing in all around Jesus. And she reached in and just touched the hem of his garment. And all of a sudden Jesus said, who touched me? Now you can imagine there were crowds, massive crowds all around Jesus and pressing in on him to listen to every word and, and to experience his healing power. And yet one woman came and pressed through the crowd just to by faith touch the hem of his garment. 
And Jesus said, who touched me? And I can imagine the crowd splitting apart and clearing the way to that one woman who just by faith knew that if she could just touch Jesus, that she would be healed. And there's story after story in the scriptures where people came to Christ and they experienced healing. Bill is asked if, if we would come around him and anoint him for healing today. So I'm gonna ask Bill if he'd come and there might be one or two or three more of you who would like to come and just lay your hands on Jesus, I mean on Bill, in Jesus' name, and just pray. We don't have to go into the details of what he's struggling with. It's not really what's, it, what's important right now. What's important is that Christ is here. Amen. How many of you believe that even where two or three are gathered together in his name, that he is with us and his presence is here? And the scriptures say, if any, of, if any of you is sick among you, let him call the elders of the church to anoint with oil, to pray and anoint with oil. And the scripture says this, this is the authority of the word of God and the prayer of righteous people. Now, it's not our righteousness. It's not our goodness. We're made righteous by the shed blood of the lamb. It's Christ's righteousness in us that makes us righteous. And the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. So Bill, we're gonna anoint you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Nothing magical here, nothing mystical. It's just following the scriptures and believing in Jesus. Bill, in the name of the Father and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we anoint you now with oil, the oil representing the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. And we pray, our hearts united together, the scripture says, if even two of you agree on any one thing, it will be done by my Father in heaven. And so Father, right now we are praying in faith as we follow the scriptures that you would bring complete healing to Bill and to what he's going through and to what he's experiencing and that you by your power would release him, Lord, from this. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. So as a church family, we gather together around you, lifting you up, Bill, to the throne of heaven. And we pray for healing now. And by faith, you are healed. By the shed blood of Jesus, you are healed. No longer dependent, no longer uh, um, uh, illness, Lord. We're praying this in the name of Jesus, and we're praying with great expectancy in the name of Jesus. It's only in the name of Jesus that we pray and take this moment. And all the people said in one heart and with one agreement, Amen, amen and amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. We're, 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 we're trusting, buddy. We're I trusting. Know. We're trusting. Thanks. Glory to God. Let's sing. We have so many reasons to give glory to God. Let's sing together. Worship his holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning, it's time to
she'll take and she'll be. Now we'll find her soul is there. Blessed Savior, thou hast promised. Now we'll call our burdens there. Me together, Jesus. Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Our soon coming King, who's his, what's his name? Jesus. Jesus. The one who reigns over all, what's his name? Jesus. Jesus. The one who brings healing, what's his name? Jesus. The one who gave his life to save us and raised again on the third day, giving us new life, his name is Jesus. Jesus. Glory to God. Jesus, we lift you up today. We honor you. You said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men and women and boys and girls unto myself. And so we, in this congregation, lift up the name of Jesus today. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Jerry and Tanya wanted to say a little something. I don't know if you want, are prepared to do that. Uh, 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 just something briefly 
We have appreciated their ministry across the years, and uh, we want to give them an opportunity before they go. They'll come back from time to time, but we wanted to give you an opportunity to just share your testimony a little bit. Yeah, mostly you know I'm from Ukrainian, and I came from socialism country, and I pray very hard we not go here for socialism country because they're gonna control your house, they're gonna control your money. You couldn't make much money because they're gonna take away if you're gonna have extra money. You, if you have something extra in the house, you couldn't have, that was socialism. It's very sad, people don't understand about socialism. Government wanna take everything from people. People can live uh, how they just survive. That's what we live. We didn't have electricity in the Ukrainian. We didn't have uh, water. Everything uh, have to do very hard. And I pray very hard if God provided. And uh, we moved here in the Payson. I said this is last time we move. I said, oh, this is our house. This is our church. It's our place. And somehow, we have to keep going, have to move another place. We're gonna miss everybody. I wanna say thank you very much for everybody being so good. Especially I like working in the kitchen because Ukrainian we didn't have good kitchen. It's been hard to work in the kitchen. That's what I like always <laughs> to help in the kitchen. And thanks God for each one. I pray speak blessing. And in my mind came a story about Abraham when God tested him and told him bring uh, your son I Isaac to sacrifice. And Bible didn't tell us if uh, he told his wife Sarah about this or he just told her, we just have to go bring a sacrifice to God. And he took a couple servants servant, and they went to the walk uh, today and third day he saw, God showed him, God lift, uh, Abraham lifted his eyes and he saw. And I saw what Abraham saw, his, I think he saw Jesus, he was crucified. He was, uh, God provided lamb when later Abraham told his son Isaac. And I saw about this and every time we have problem, I have problem, I go into my secret room and go in the Calvary because God gonna provide it. And I praise, be blessed each one doesn't matter what you face in problem. I pray a big blessing for each one. God going to provide it. God bless you. Thank you. I would just like to, of course, Tanya kind of says it all. But, uh, you know, Tanya and I, we've been married for 22 years now. And uh, I have changed a lot since we've been married. And... Uh, uh, Tanya has uh, really made me a better man than I ever thought I could be. But uh, I just think of any one of you wants to know about socialism or communism, you can talk to my wife. She can tell you everything about it. Yeah. And they left their whole farm, which wasn't much, but everything they grew on it went to the government, and they left them enough just to survive on until next season. Uh, that they could come back and rob all their crops again. And when they had an opportunity in 1991, just after the wall came down, uh, being behind the Iron Curtain, the wall came down and they had a, a window of opportunity with Mikhail Gorbachev to get out and they left. And uh, they said, it's a road that we don't wanna go down here. Now, I know if Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego there weren't three guys in the furnaces, there were four. Anytime we go into that voting booth by ourselves, we can have two. You know, just like they had four. So when you go into that voting booth, just sense that Jesus is there with you. Amen. And uh, we hate to leave here, but when things change, when my mom, you know, we want to spend more time with mom, but when, when things change, we'll be back. Good. Good. God bless you. We've enjoyed our fellowship with them over the, the years, and they've had us over several times and great meals and firework shows and the whole bit. So we will definitely miss you being with us. 
We want to continue our series on making disciples, on how to make disciples. We've been giving you practical tools uh, all along. Uh, you, we've, we've given you a tool of how you can pray for your neighbors. I hope that you take advantage of that and go online to blesseveryhome.org uh, uh, and take advantage of that and, and be praying for your neighbors by name. You have uh, uh, I've given you evangelism tools like the bridge and like uh, 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 how to make your own personal testimony and uh, create that in such a way to where you can uh, share it briefly, concisely. Uh, there's nothing more powerful than your own personal testimony of what Jesus has done in your own life. Nobody can deny that if it's your own personal experience with the Lord, amen? And uh, I shared with you the Roman road and so on. So let's say that you have led someone to faith in Christ. Let's say that you have witnessed God put the two of you together and you've shared the gospel with them. You've been praying for them and, the, and, and uh, you shared your testimony or you shared that uh, uh, gospel presentation called The Bridge. You've explained to them uh, how they uh, are in need of a savior and they profess Jesus as their savior. What next? What next? You've got a brand new baby now, right? When Jesus talked about being born again, when a person becomes a saved, they become redeemed, they're a brand new child. So do you say, have a nice life. I've done my job. Thank you very much. Stick a feather in my hat. Or is there more to do? What did Jesus say? Jesus gave us a very clear command. What did he say? Okay, it's not working. Let's get it working again. There it is. Jesus said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Now, here's what I want you to do. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them everything I have commanded you to obey everything I have commanded you, teaching them. So you say, well, what do I teach? I've led them to faith in Jesus. What do I teach? What, what should I do now with this brand new babe in Christ? They need to know what it really means to be a follower of Jesus, right? So I'm gonna give you a tool now that I want, I'm gonna take you through this series and we're gonna go through this together. The teens are already like way ahead of us. I don't know, what are they on, lesson six or seven or eight, or are they done? Oh, you've reviewed, okay. So the teens have already been through this. So they know all the answers. So if you need to know the answers, or you miss one, go to one of the teens. They've been through this now. But I wanna equip you with a tool. So I provided each of you one of these packets here and I've always wanted to do this, and now we're gonna do it, okay? I wanna give you this tool, and I have plenty more. So I would like for, and I pulled number one out for you to make it easy for you, and I'd like to, us to go through this together. Like I said, I'm all about giving you practical tools now. So we're gonna go through this together. You've led someone to faith in Jesus, and now you need to take them on their spiritual journey. This, the, this Bible study series will help you to help that new believer. What happened to me? What do I do now? I'm born again. I believe in Jesus. I feel different. My life has changed, but now what? The, this tool is designed to help you to know what is next. So we're going to go through this quickly together, okay? All right. So uh, what you would do is you would pull number one out. You would uh, have them uh, give that to them and go through it together. You'll have your Bible with them. You, you teach them about the Bible. They, how many of you know that there is a complete, uh, almost a massive biblical illiteracy in this country today? People do not know about the Bible. They may have five or six of them on their shelves, but they're not studying their Bible. They're not reading the Word. They don't even know how to look a scripture up. They don't know where Matthew is from Ezekiel or Revelation from Genesis. They don't know. 
So you are taking a brand new babe in Christ and teaching them how to use the Word of God by going through this together. So <clears throat> let's begin quickly. We're going to run through this together each week. We're going to take one. So I want you to take this home with you. If you want to move, go ahead throughout the week and uh, fill it out, then we'll go through it together on Sunday. How's that sound? Okay. But let me tell you what's going to happen. Even your faith is going to be renewed in this. As you go through what the Word of God is saying happened to, to you and what all He does for you. Isn't that great? So this is going to be wonderful. Let's go on this journey together. We'll, we'll uh, skip the first part about how to use the study. It basically explains about how to look scriptures up and so on and so forth. But you're going to be leading them. So it, it begins, if you have invited Christ into your life, then you have begun a relationship with him. The scriptures in this study will help you to better understand what it means to begin your new life with Christ living inside you. And like any new relationship, there will be highs and lows in your walk with Christ as you learn to navigate your journey together. So I'm not going to have you turn in your Bibles to all the various scriptures. You can if you want to. I've actually provided them for you uh, uh, to, uh, on PowerPoint. So let's go through it together. You, ha you have to have a plan. That's the whole point. How many of you are excited about sharing the gospel with somebody? I hope all of you are, because the Lord has changed your life. The Lord has given you brand new life. The Lord has given you a hope. You have a joy in your heart. You have a future. You know that when you breathe your last breath, that you're going to be with the Lord forever. Amen? Because of your faith in Jesus. But that new believer doesn't understand any of this. So this is going to help you're, this is as you go through this and and know how to work this tool then you're going to be able to share it with somebody else and help them on their journey i can't hardly wait to see what god is going to do through you as you lead someone else to faith in jesus and then take them on this spiritual journey so here we go when you receive christ by personal invitation when you receive christ by personal invitation you became a what of God. See, you already know the answer. That's good. But that new believer doesn't have a clue. So you need to help them to discover. And so far, so you go for that, you go to John 1 12. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. He gave the right to become children of God. So when you received Christ by personal invitation, you became what? A child of God. You became God's child. And then you can go on to explain. That means he's your father. Now, what is, how, how many of you had really awesome fathers? I mean, they would give you the shirt off their back. It doesn't always happen that way, but unfortunately... But for the most part, if you have a really awesome dad, they would do anything for you. How much more is God the Father going to bless you and take care of you and love you and provide for you? Do you see that? So as you explain these things, you became God's kid. He's your heavenly father now. What kind of a dad do you think that God is going to be? The best dad in the world. Amen? So you help them to understand their personal relationship with God. Number two, when Christ comes into your life, he forms a personal relationship with you. And then you look at Revelation 3.20, it says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. What is that indicating? How many of you sit around the dinner table with your, your spouse or your children or your friends or whatever? What's happening while you're sitting around the dinner table? You're developing relationship, aren't you? This is exactly the picture that God has for you. You're developing relationship. You're talking together. Believe me, God isn't as far away as two people sitting with each other texting and not speaking a word even though it may seem like that sometimes. 
but you're talking with one another. He's talking with you. You're talking with him. It's a personal relationship daily, every day with the Father. He's come into your heart. He's saying, here's the picture. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone opens the door, what will he do? Come on now. He will come in, okay? So the next question, who is knocking at the door? For that, you can look at Revelation 1.1 to get the answer, because Revelation 3.20 doesn't name who it is, but Revelation 1.1 does. It's the revelation of Jesus Christ. It's the revelation of Christ, God the, the Son, this is all about Jesus. So who's it knocking at the door? It's Jesus. And who may answer his voice and knock? Who may answer his voice and knock? The scripture says, if anyone hears my voice, if who may, who may answer? Anyone, anyone, right? Some people teach, no, it's only those that God chooses. Folks, the scripture is clear. Anyone can come to the Father. Amen? Anyone can come to the Father. Anyone can hear his voice. What does he want you to do? What does he want you to do? He wants you to, the scripture says, open the door of your heart. So what does he want you to do? Open the door, receive him, welcome him, let him come in, glory to God. And then what will he do if you open the door? The scripture says, I will come in, amen? And eat with him and he with me. So what will Jesus do if you open the door by faith of your heart? What will he do? He will come in. Isn't this great? Now, the next question is, is how do you open the door? Well, for that, we look at the previous verse. The scripture says, those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline, so be earnest and what? Repent. 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 We open the door to a holy Savior by repenting of our sin. By repenting of our sin. Okay? How do you open the door? You repent. What does repent mean? It means taking a U-turn, doesn't it? It means I'm no longer going to live this way. A lot of people today think that they can be a Christian and still just live in sin. Nothing could be further from the truth. Amen? When you become a follower of Jesus, you are following Jesus now, not the way of the world, not the sinful lifestyle. You are now a follower of Jesus. Now, this next question is subjective, and I hope all of you have the right answer because your eternal destiny depends on it. Have you opened the door of your heart to Jesus? Have you placed your faith in Jesus and what he did for you on that cross and in his glorious resurrection. So the next question also is subjective. Where is Jesus right now then? He's in your heart. He's in your heart on the authority of the word of God. The very spirit of Jesus himself has come into your life. Hallelujah. I'm excited about it. All right, number three, the reason that Christ came to seek and to save you was because what? What was the reason Jesus came? Okay, the scripture says in Luke 19, 10, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. It's the spiritually lost. So the reason that Christ came to save you is because you were spiritually what? You were spiritually lost. You were you were wandering away from God. You were fallen from God. According to Romans 3.23, why were you lost? The scripture says, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So according to Romans 3.23, why were you lost? Because you sinned. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, right? All, the Bible says all have sinned and all fall short of the glory of God. You cannot earn your way into God's presence. You cannot reach far enough or be good enough 
we are born fallen and, and away from God and separated from God and spiritually lost. In Romans, it says the wages of sin is what then? If we're all born in sin and we're all fallen, what is the penalty? The scripture tells us the wages of sin or the penalty of sin is death, spiritual death, okay? So we're all born spiritually dead, according to the word. In Romans, it says the wages of sin is death. So the penalty, what we deserve is death. We went over that when we talked about the bridge presentation. So, but who died for your sins? This is the good news part. Who died for your sins? We understand what the problem is. We're all fallen short. We're all under the penalty of death. We're all, but someone paid the penalty for you. That's the good news. God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Hallelujah. It's our faith in Jesus that saves us. Amen. <clears throat> so, and, and Romans 5, 8, and 9 says, since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? So, <clears throat> who has already died for your sins? Bible says, even while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us in our place. That's how much that God loved you. So when you confessed your sins, what did God do? When you confessed your sins, when you repented and confessed and say, Father, I'm sorry, I don't wanna live that way anymore, I don't wanna be lost, I don't wanna want suffer for all eternity, I don't wanna be separated from you and you confessed and repented and, and you said, I believe in Jesus now, what is God's part? Scripture says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will what? He will forgive us of our sins, just some of our sins, all, and purify us, purify us from all unrighteousness. So when you confess your sins, what did God do? He forgave you of all of it, and he purifies you. Hallelujah. So you can see how this helps a new believer to understand when they don't even understand, they don't, they don't understand. They don't understand what all this is all about. Isaiah 55, seven tells us what you should do about the sins that you've confessed to God and apologized for. So what you wanna do is underline the words here that tell you what you, what is your part that you should do about your past sin and about your wicked ways, and then circle what God will do. Here's what you do, here's what God will do, according to Isaiah 55, seven. So if you were underlining, it says, let the wicked forsake his way and the evil man his thoughts, let him turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and to our God, for he will freely pardon. So what's the first thing that you should do? Forsake all sin. If God calls it sin, what should you do with it? Amen? So now you're helping the new believer to understand what, what they must do. If God calls it sin, what should you do with it? You, you forsake it completely. Amen? This is where many people fall short in, in modern day Christianity. They believe in a sinning religion. They believe, well, I'll just go ahead and sin because God's going to forgive me anyway. Folks, Jesus died on a cross because of sin. Do you understand that? It was our sin that nailed Jesus to the cross. So if we have that attitude, well, I'll just go on sinning. What are you doing? You're nailing Jesus to that cross all over again. Amen? If you deliberately sin, you know something is a sin, but you do it anyway, you are putting Jesus back on that cross. And by the way, that's according to the word of God. Okay, we need to understand we are to be a holy people. I'm speaking to the church now. Okay, we are a holy people. So this is the first thing we do is forsake. And what else should we forsake? Forsake our evil way and even evil thoughts. 
if the old enemy comes around, he starts tempting you and you start thinking about it, what should you do with that immediately? Amen? How many of you know that, that your brain and your thought pattern, your thoughts are the devil's playground? He likes to play around with our thoughts, right? He is constantly trying to play around in, there's a battle going on. So what should we do, folks? We need to look at our thoughts according to the word of God. And if we see that those thoughts are not right, what should we do with them? So that's our part. What will God do? Uh, no, the, the third part. What's the next thing we should do? Turn to the Lord. Forsake the evil ways, forsake the evil thoughts, and immediately turn to our Savior. Amen? What will God do? He will have what on you? He will be merciful to you. How many of you know that God is a merciful God? He's not up there with a giant baseball bat trying to just hoping that you'll mess up so that he can pound you. He wants to pour his mercy and grace into your life. Amen. He wants to he wants to pour how many of you know the scripture says that his mercies are new every morning. Every morning God is our father. Remember he's our father. And he pours his mercy and he wants to be merciful to you and he wants to love on you and care for you. That's what God does. And then what else will God do? Freely pardon Hallelujah. Can you see why the gospel is such good news? And why we need to help that new believer to understand. I submit to you that there are many, many Christians who don't even know this. They don't even know this. We need to be armed with the truth of the word of God. Aren't you glad for the word of God today? According to Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, the way to receive salvation is what? How do we receive salvation? By doing a lot of good works. If I can just be good enough, maybe God will save me. How about by trying to do our best to do right all the time? How many of you know that that's pretty much impossible when we try our best? We try our best, but how many of you know that we're human? So is that what's gonna save us? our humanness and trying to do our best. Yes, please do try to do your best. But is that what saves us? How about accepting God's forgiveness by faith? That's what saves us, amen? What is it that saves us? It says, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It's not by trying to do your best. It's not trying to be good enough. It's not by doing good works so that nobody, none of us can boast that we are good enough for God. Amen? None of us can boast. Well, I'm just a little bit better than you are. That's not according to the word of God. Okay, well, God, he owes me one. God owes me one. Some people have that attitude I'm really good. God, God should be pleased that he even has me on his team. That's not, a, that's not what the word says, okay? Uh-oh. There we go. So according to Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, the way to receive salvation is what? Just receiving God's forgiveness by faith. God did all the work. We are the only faith in all of the world where somebody else did the work for you. That separates Christianity from every single religion in all the world. Jesus paid it all. I'm glad we did that song this morning. <clears throat> so once you have received salvation and been made new, a new creation in Christ, what does God want you to do? Some people think, well, I'm saved now and I can sit back and just... Do you think that maybe God saved you for a reason? Right? For we are God's handiwork. Created in Christ Jesus to do good works. 
which God prepared in advance for us to do. How many of you realize that if you're still breathing, God still has something for you to do? Yes. He's still working on you. He's still working on you. He's still working on you. He still has something that he wants you to do as long as you have breath. There is no retirement system in the kingdom. Amen? There's no such thing as a retirement system in the kingdom until you see Jesus face to face. Amen? Once you have received salvation and have been made new, a new creation in Christ, what does God want you to do? The good works which he has prepared in advance for you to do. So who should we be in tune to all the time saying, okay, God, I just gave it away. God, what's next? God, what's next? God, what's next? You, you, have, you have stuff for me to do. What's next, Lord? This is the most exciting life in the world serving the Lord. Amen? Amen? Serving the Lord. Whom do you get to know through Christ Jesus? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And verse 9 says, anyone who is, Jesus said, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. So who do you get to know when you get to know Jesus? You are getting to know God. Let me add a verse, John 14, 7. Jesus said, if you really know me, you will know my Father as well. So when someone asks you, how do I get to know God? There's one name that you should speak. And what's his name? Jesus. If you really want to know what God is like, just look at the life and the teachings of God. Jesus. Hallelujah. Whom do you get to know through Jesus Christ? You get to know the Father, Almighty God. Isn't that great? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word was made flesh. You who truly believe or have put your faith in Jesus may what? That you have eternal life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. Folks, on the authority of the Word of God, do you have eternal life if you placed your faith in Jesus? Yes. Is it a maybe? Is it a maybe? Maybe I might. When you breathe your last breath, what can you know on the authority of the Word of God? You have eternal life. I forgot who it was that said, Christians die well. Christians die well. Somebody Google that for me and let me know who it is. I consult Rabbi Google a lot. So. You who truly believe or have put your faith in Jesus may know that you have eternal life on the authority of the word of God may know. John 6, 47 says that if a person believes he or she has, very truly I tell you, the one who believes maybe might have eternal life. Maybe possibly if you're good enough might be able to somehow earn. No, anyone who believes in Jesus has eternal life. Hallelujah, has eternal life. So how do you know you're a child of God? This is subjective here. How do you know that you are a child of God? Now that you have become a child of God, according to John 3, 3 through 7, I won't do the whole thing, you will need spiritual food right now. You'll need spiritual food to grow. So here's where you're helping that new believer to get them into the Word of God. Folks, how many of you understand that this is our bread of life? Jesus is our bread of life, and it is the Word of God which feeds our, and we grow on. Amen? So if a person is a Christian and they never open this book, how many of you believe that they're going to be spiritually anemic? spiritually anemic because they're not feeding on the word of God. 
They need to get, you need to get that new believer. And let me say to all of you, you need to be in this every single day of your life. Every single day of your life. Starting in January, I'm going to be giving you another new tool. And we're going to start with Genesis 1-1. And we're going to go through the word together. How's that sound to you? The Lord has led me to say, January 1st, 1-1 one, one of 2021, 20, where do you start? Genesis 1-1, one, one, and we're going to go through the Word of God together. And I'm going to give you a tool to help you to get into the Word of God. Ronnie and I have been doing this for about two months now, and it has revolutionized our lives. And now I'm going to pass this tool on to you starting January 1st, okay? All right, so now that you've uh, become a child of God, you will need spiritual food to help you grow. In Matthew 4, 4, besides bread, what does Jesus say will sustain you? Jesus said, it is written, man shall not live. By the way, he said this to the devil right to his face when the devil was trying to take Jesus out. And what did Jesus say? Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. In Matthew 4, 4, besides bread, what does Jesus say will sustain you? Every word, you like that? I kind of did the wave. <laughs> every word that comes from the mouth of God. How many of you know that this is from the mouth of God himself? So if you want to get to know God, what do you need to do? Every day, every day, every day, be in the Word. 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. Teaching, rebuking. When I get into the Word, sometimes I feel a little bit of a sting of God. You know what I mean? Scripture, said, scripture tells us that, that God disciplines those that he loves. Sometimes I have to say, God, do you have to hurt so much? But that's what God's word does. It teaches you. It hones you. It makes you holy. The, ble the shed blood of Jesus makes you holy. The word cleanses you. So, this, this says these studies will help you grow spiritually. Below are some of the other steps you can take to strengthen your relationship with Christ. Read your Bible every day. Pray every day. We're going to go into that in the next lesson or two about prayer and the importance of prayer. Attend church. Scripture says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. I know these are difficult times, but folks, we need each other. More than ever before, we need each other. Amen? Listen for God's voice and obey. When God speaks to you, either through his word or by his spirit within you, what should your response be? Yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your, obey, to your way. Amen? Yes, Lord, yes. Whatever the word says, okay? And the Holy Spirit, through his word, speaking to you and share your new faith. There are, there are very few more dynamic Christians than ones who have just been saved. Dynamic. But we all need to be sharing our faith. This is only the beginning of your greatest adventure. Take it one step at a time and know that Christ is walking right beside you. I love that great old hymn. And he walks with me and he talks with me. Little boy said, I found out what God's name is in church today. It's Andy. <laughs> Parents said, Andy? Yeah, and he walks with me and he talks with me. Right? Doesn't get any better. Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice, it opens the door. This is a scripture memory verse. You can cut that out and post it on your mirror when you're shaving in the morning or whatever you're doing in the morning and memorize the word of God. In the Psalms, it says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against God. I have hidden your word. So you begin that new believer uh, uh, on a journey of memorizing the word of God. And each one of these studies has a brand new memory verse. 
Isn't this good, folks? I want to give you, I've committed myself to giving you practical tools so that you can live for the Lord and fulfill the mission that God has called the church to fulfill in our world today. Hallelujah. Next week, we're going to be talking about walking with God. Walking with God and what that means to walk with God each and every day of your life. I may even introduce a, a neat chorus. Now, walk with God. And anyway, it's a great chorus. I forgot the words, but. He will be your closest friend. Hey, that's it. That's it. That's it. He will be your closest friend. Well, stand with me, folks. This is good days. We are living in the most exciting days uh, that you can imagine. And, and uh, we have so much to be thankful to God for. So let's close with this song. Uh, once again, uh, sing it out. I saw the light. Testimony time. Sing it with me. I saw the light. I saw the light. somebody a holy hug they might need it <laughs> or you could do a fist pound god bless you have a great day in the lord prayer meeting tonight at six o'clock